Red Dead Redemption 2 is an open-world action-adventure game set in the late 1800s, created by Rockstar Games and released in October of 2018. It is the second game in the Red Dead Redemption series, and it serves as a prequel to the first game released in 2010. I played Red Dead Redemption 2 in late 2018 on a complete whim without having any experience with the original game, and I ended up enjoying it much more than I initially expected. The game has received tons of critical acclaim since its release, with it currently sitting at an incredible 97% on Metacritic, and it is widely considered to be one of the greatest video games ever created. But is the game truly deserving of all this praise, or is it overrated? In this video, I will be discussing why Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of my favorite games of all time. I would like to mention that there will be complete spoilers for the entirety of the game in this video, so if you haven't played it yet for whatever reason, then don't watch this video. Anyways, with all that being said, let's get started. Red Dead Redemption 2 has a pretty simplistic gameplay style. The game follows a basic linear mission structure that can be found in pretty much any of Rockstar's previous games. The missions tend to follow the same design. You talk to someone, and they'll tell you to go somewhere, and then a group of people will all ride their horses to the specified location, and somehow it leads to a shootout, then the mission ends. This is honestly one of my biggest complaints with this game. The missions do feel pretty repetitive at times. It's not much of an issue in the original game since it's a much shorter game, but Red Dead 2's campaign is over 30 hours longer than the original game, so by the end of the story, the missions can feel pretty repetitious and forgettable. However, this is a criticism that has been brought up countless times, and I am most certainly not the first person to talk about it. So I'd like to mention that even though there's plenty of bland missions, there's also plenty of incredible and unique missions that are very memorable, and those are easily my favorite ones in the game. So I don't think that people should just write off all the missions as being uninspired and dull, I just feel like there's a severe lack of unique missions, and the game could definitely use more variety. The mission design isn't terrible, it's just pretty average and fairly outdated since Rockstar has been using this same mission format since the early 2000s. Now, let's talk about the actual combat system. The combat is pretty simple. You primarily just shoot enemies with the weapons you currently have equipped. There's a variety of different weapons in the game, most of which are guns such as pistols, revolvers, repeaters, shotguns, and sniper rifles. But there's also other weapons such as bows, melee weapons such as knives and hatchets, and throwable weapons like dynamite, throwing knives, and fire bottles. You can even dual-wield revolvers or pistols if you want to as well. You can also customize your guns by changing the way they look and customizing their features such as the barrel and the iron sights. There's a pretty good variety of different weapons to use in combat. However, honestly, when it comes to guns, a lot of them feel the same. I'm assuming this was primarily done to add more realism, but it is still a bit disappointing since despite the fact that there's so many guns in the game, I never really felt any incentive to try other guns. For the most part, once I found a loadout I liked, I just kind of stuck with it for the majority of the game. However, I really love messing around with the melee weapons, and I think that they add a nice amount of combat options to the game. Outside of weapons, the combat has a few other mechanics, such as the cover system. When near a wall or structure, of some sort, the player can hide behind it as cover from gunfire. The cover system is a nice feature, and it's almost essential for surviving in fights. However, I wish it didn't feel so unresponsive. Once hitting the button, you have to wait a few seconds for the animation of getting into cover to stop, and a lot of times, the game will not cover in the right spot and I'll end up dying because of that. The cover mechanic feels like it's barely improved since the first Red Dead Redemption game, which is pretty disappointing considering that the first game came out 8 years before Red Dead 2. And this leads me to my next point. This game as a whole feels pretty unresponsive. The animations in this game are incredibly slow, and simply moving around can feel cumbersome at times. For example, a 7 second animation plays every time you pick up an item or grab a plant from the ground. I understand why these animations are in the game, since the game is trying to be as realistic and immersive as possible, but I still feel like they slow down the game and make it feel heavy to control. I don't think that they should fully remove these animations, since that would definitely take away a lot of what makes this game special, but simply making the animation shorter would be a much needed improvement. However, to be honest, after playing the game for several hours, you just kinda get used to the slower, heavy playstyle of the game, and it doesn't bother me nearly as much as it did when I first started playing the game. Anyways, with that small tangent aside, I should get back to discussing the combat system. The final major mechanic of the combat that I have yet to discuss is the Deadeye feature. When aiming your weapon, you can activate Deadeye Targeting Mode, which slows down time almost to a complete stop. 
You can then place targets on the enemy, which you can place several targets on a single enemy or place several targets on multiple enemies at once. After placing the targets and initiating the attack, you will shoot all of the enemies exactly where the targets were placed regardless of aim, and then time will return to normal again. However, in order to use Deadeye, you need to make sure your Deadeye meter is filled enough to use it, since the meter will deplete while you're in targeting mode. Your Deadeye level will also increase by progressing through the story, which will allow you to unlock even more features, such as being able to see vital points on the enemy. From my experience as someone who is terrible at aiming in video games, Deadeye is incredibly overpowered, since it can basically guarantee you a hit on the enemy. And despite the meter preventing you from using it too much, I quickly found out that if you just buy as much chewing tobacco from the store as possible, when you're in combat and your Deadeye meter is completely drained, just quickly take cover and use the chewing tobacco. And despite it being incredibly unhealthy, especially for someone with tuberculosis, it will regenerate your entire Deadeye meter in almost an instant, allowing you to continue using it for pretty much the entire fight. Overall, despite Red Dead Redemption 2 having a pretty simple combat system, it never gets boring for the most part and is generally pretty solid. Anyways, now let's talk about other elements of the gameplay. Alongside your health, stamina, and Deadeye meters, you have cores, which act as another meter. However, the core meters deplete much faster than the regular meter. Once the meter of one of your attributes is fully depleted, your core will start depleting as well. Depending on how full your core is determines how quickly your attributes meter will recharge. Cores will naturally drain over time, however, outside factors can also affect your cores, such as getting injured during fights, being in extreme temperatures, or being poisoned. Using chewing tobacco or smoking cigarettes and cigars, drinking certain types of alcohol, and using tonics can also negatively affect your cores. I really like the core mechanic, since it gives provisions and tonics a much bigger role in the gameplay and makes you actually consider what consumable items to use. Another important gameplay mechanic is the honor system. If the player does positive actions, such as helping people with problems and donating to your camp, the player's honor will increase. On the contrary, if the player does negative actions, such as robbing a store or killing innocent people, the player's honor will decrease. The player's honor level will affect various aspects of the game. If your honor level is high, you will get price discounts at stores. However, if your honor level is low, you will get higher quality items when looting dead bodies. Your honor level will also affect how the random NPCs in the world talk about you, and will also affect the outcome of the story. Most notably, it also changes Arthur's death at the end of Chapter 6. If the player has high honor and decides to help John get to safety, Arthur will die from tuberculosis relatively peacefully watching the sunrise. However, if the player has low honor and decides to help John, Arthur will get shot in the face by Micah. There's also other variants of the Chapter 6 ending, depending on if you decide to go back for the money with either high or low honor. If you have high honor, Arthur dies more peacefully, but if you have low honor, Arthur will die less peacefully. However, why would you ever choose to go back for the money? Like, seriously, why? The player's honor level will also affect various other scenes in the game in both main story cutscenes and side quest cutscenes. Mostly just by changing the dialogue slightly and the protagonist's personality to match your honor level. And when Arthur dies in the story and you switch control to John, the player's honor level as Arthur will actually affect how other characters talk about him after his death. Overall, the honor system is one of my favorite mechanics in the whole game, and the way it affects gameplay is very subtle yet very well done, and it makes me feel like a legitimately horrible person for doing bad things, which I assume was the intended effect. It really makes you think about the choices you make while exploring the world, and how it ties into the story and its themes is really incredible. So much detail went into this tiny little mechanic, and I really appreciate that. While you're out exploring the world, you may also come across various side quest missions. They're easily one of my favorite things to find in this game, and they are absolutely some of the best side quests I've ever seen in any video game. Each of them feel very unique and have their own interesting stories and characters, and very rarely do the objectives feel tedious. Oftentimes, these quests will get very... strange, to say the least, but they still manage a way to be very engaging. The side quests are hands down some of my favorite things in the game, and at times they legitimately have better design than the main story missions. However, by far my favorite aspect of the gameplay is the absolutely incredible exploration. This game has one of, if not my absolute favorite open world in any video game ever. I absolutely love going around the world and seeing what it has to offer. This game takes a very different approach to the world design when compared to most other games. Rather than the game following your usual open world formula where there are tons of collectibles, constant action, towers to climb, etc., Red Dead 2 takes a much slower paced and almost melancholic approach to the exploration. Due to this, the world feels much more real and less like your usual video game world. Yet somehow, despite the really slow exploration, 
I never got bored of exploring and discovering things. If anything, the slower pace made the world feel all the more fascinating and helped to create a very strong and unusual atmosphere that very few games have. While I do still enjoy the usual open world format, it is very nice and refreshing to have something different for once. The world feels so alive, and every town is filled with people with their own individual schedules, and they're all just simply living their day-to-day -day life. Every NPC in the game has their own unique dialogue, and sometimes I just love casually talking with people and seeing what they all have to say and to see what they're doing. While out exploring, you can come across random encounters, which are basically just random events that can occur anywhere in the world. Usually these events just involve random people doing various things that the player can interact with in tons of different ways. Sometimes these encounters range from funny interactions, casual interactions, intense interactions, or just downright horrifying interactions. These random encounters add so much depth to the world, and they are such an amazing aspect of the game, and they truly make the world feel more lively and realistic. There's so much stuff in this game that feels like it should be a full side quest, but it's not. It's just a random encounter that the player can casually come across while exploring. This game is so incredibly immersive that I oftentimes just find myself going in first person camera mode, walking into a store, and simply shopping for items for a solid 5 minutes straight. If your game world is so captivating that it makes me want to shop for items and just walk around town and talk to people with no goal in mind, then you know that you've succeeded at creating an engaging world. Even outside of just NPCs, there's also so much wildlife in this game. There's over 200 animals in this game, and the huge amount of creatures really makes the environment feel so much more real. Almost nothing in this game feels like you're doing the same task over and over. No matter how many hours I've put into this game at this point, every time I play it, I still discover new things. Things, and I know for a fact that I'll never be able to see everything there is in this game. The attention to detail is just unbelievable. Every single thing you do has some sort of animation and small effect on the world, and there's so many minute details to see while exploring. Despite the world feeling very slow and peaceful while exploring, it's not like there's a lack of things to do, there's always something to do. Whether it be hunting regular animals to get upgrades and money, playing games like poker, clearing out enemy camps, becoming a bounty hunter, hunting for legendary animals, watching a show, going fishing, setting up a camp and crafting things, robbing stores, completing side quests, doing random challenges, coming across random encounters, doing duels, and so much more. Even though there's so many things to do, the game spreads out its content enough to where it doesn't feel cluttered like a lot of other open world games, and it's still able to maintain its serene atmosphere. Another thing that makes the exploration so great is the game's physics. Red Dead 2 has by far the best physics that I've ever seen in a game. The physics work exactly as you'd expect them to in real life, and I rarely come across any moment where the physics felt unnatural. The physics just add a whole nother layer to the world and its realism. Also, the ragdoll physics are just great. However, one minor complaint I do have with the exploration is that I do wish there was more of an incentive to explore. I never felt like there was much of a reward for exploring and doing things. I personally like the way that the first Red Dead Redemption game incentivized exploration. In the original game, well in the pause menu, you could see a list of challenges that you could complete for rewards. And you could even complete various tasks to unlock new outfits that you can wear, which would give you a random benefit or a stat boost. However, in Red Dead Redemption 2, there is no outfit system or anything similar. And even though there is a menu for challenges that you can complete, it's buried deep within tons of different menus, so I never even knew it was a thing until after I completed the game. However, it's still not a huge deal, since I do believe that a lot of the reward is seeing what the world has to offer, though a bit more of a reward for exploration would be appreciated. Overall, the gameplay of Red Dead Redemption 2 is just simply wonderful, and despite the somewhat bland mission structure and combat, the game very much makes up for it by having incredible mechanics and one of the greatest open worlds I've ever seen in any video game. Anyways, now let's talk about the visuals and the sound design. Red Dead Redemption 2 is by far one of the most visually impressive games I've ever seen. In terms of games with realistic graphics, this game is absolutely the pinnacle of visuals. This game is absolutely stunning, and I'm actually impressed that Rockstar was able to get this game running as well as they did on 2013 hardware. The amount of detail that goes into every tiny aspect of the graphics is just remarkable, 
Yeah, despite the fact that it took dozens of hours of crunch and caused employees to be overworked. But regardless, it still looks absolutely beautiful, and it's easily one of the best looking video games ever made. The game's environment is at times literally indistinguishable from real life. In fact, the game is so visually realistic that some people literally uploaded screenshots of the game to nature subreddits, and almost no one noticed. Usually, I find games with realistic graphics to look very similar and quite uninspired, However, Red Dead Redemption 2 is still able to maintain its own unique visual style, while simultaneously being the most realistic game ever created. And it avoids looking generic like your typical Ubisoft or Activision game. Overall, Red Dead Redemption 2 has some of the most gorgeous and impressive graphics I've seen in any game ever created. And quite frankly, I don't know how Rockstar is going to be able to top this visual style in the next Red Dead game. Now, let's talk about the game's sound design, which, as you'd probably expect at this point, is also absolutely incredible. Just simply walking around in the wilderness, you will hear so many ambient and subtle noises that really mix together in a very pleasant way and really help immerse you in the game's world. Just walking into a saloon and listening to the ambient piano music in the background while also hearing all these random people talk about various things is an incredible experience. Even though there are all these discussions going on in the background, none of the conversations ever feel like scripted video game dialogue. All the dialogue feels very natural and lifelike. This game by far has my favorite environmental sound design out of every game I've played. As for the game's music, well, I don't really have a whole lot to say. It's mostly a pretty ambient soundtrack, but with a couple of standout tracks. The soundtrack isn't anything mind-blowing or really all that special, but it doesn't need to be. It gets the job done just fine and fits the tone and story of the game incredibly well. Obviously, the most memorable songs from the game are usually the vocal tracks, which are easily the best ones in the game and work very nicely with the story. Also, you have that one song that every single YouTube video in existence uses for some reason. I mean, it's a good song, but man, why do I hear it absolutely everywhere? This song follows me everywhere I go, and I can't stop hearing it. It's nonstop playing 24-7 in my mind, and every time I try to sleep, this song haunts me, and I stay up all night thinking about it. Please, make it stop! Make it stop! Get out of my head! <clears throat> Sorry about that. I'd also like to quickly mention that this game has really great voice acting and motion capturing as well. All the characters feel very natural, and overall, the acting performances here are spectacular. In particular, I think Arthur, Dutch, Micah, John, and Sadie have incredibly standout performances. However, I thought pretty much everyone did a good job, and there's not a single character who I thought had a bad performance throughout the entire game. Overall, Red Dead Redemption 2 has excellent sound design, with the environmental background noises being the greatest I've ever heard in any game. And while the soundtrack may not be all that special, I still overall like it, and I think it serves its purpose well and fits the game quite nicely. And the voice acting and emotion capturing throughout the game is incredible, and the performances of the actors really make the characters stand out and be all the more memorable and likable. Now, I'd like to discuss one of my favorite aspects of this game. And to be totally honest, one aspect of the game that I didn't expect to like nearly as much as I did. The story. Red Dead Redemption 2 has by far one of my favorite video game stories of all time. The game's events occur prior to the events of the first Red Dead Redemption game. The game takes place in America in 1899 during the decline of the Wild West days. You play as Arthur Morgan, a 36-year-old man who is a member of a group of outlaws known as the Vanderlyn Gang. Following a failed ferry heist in the town of Blackwater where dozens of people were killed, the Vanderlyn Gang flees to the snowy mountains of Amberino to avoid law enforcement. After lying low for a short while, the gang continues committing several robberies to earn money and eventually escape for good. The gang is almost almost constantly on the run, and they move camp several times to evade the Pinkerton agents. One complaint that I do have is that I feel like the story takes a bit too long to really get going early on, since a lot of the missions for the first three chapters feel like you're kind of repeating the same thing over and over, and it leads to the story not being all that interesting and quite forgettable early on. However, eventually the gang decides to rob a bank in the city of Saint Denis. However, during the robbery, the Pinkertons find them and kill Jose as well as Lenny, and they also arrest John. John. The remaining gang members at the robbery sneak onto the nearby docks and board a ship that was set to go to Cuba. However, a storm breaks out and the whole ship catches on fire and begins sinking. The gang members jump off the boat and eventually wash up on the shore of an island named Guarma. 
While I do really enjoy this sudden twist, and the Guarma section of the game is a really fun section gameplay-wise, I still wish it ended up being more relevant to the game's plot, since after the gang gets off Guarma, it's never really brought up again during the story in any significant manner. But overall, I still enjoy the Guarma section in terms of gameplay, and it is a very welcome change of pace, since up to this point, a lot of the game's missions are quite unmemorable and feel quite similar to each other. But I just wish that they did more with Guarma story-wise. Eventually, the gang is able to get a ship captain to help them escape the island, and they successfully get off of Guarma. You reunite with the rest of the gang and then move camps one last time. And then the story decides to throw the biggest curveball imaginable and goes on a complete completely different path than expected. Arthur begins getting increasingly sick and is eventually diagnosed with tuberculosis, and is only given a short amount of time left to live. He decides that he should try to help the rest of the gang members get out of this situation that they're in with the short amount of time he has remaining. You then decide to go help John escape from prison. With Arthur's faith in Dutch completely gone, the camp obviously losing trust in each other, and now that Arthur doesn't have much time left, he begins seeing the world more clearly, and he reflects upon his past actions and decides to change himself for the better, and begins to help others. Eventually, Dutch decides to rob a train with the gang. However, during the robbery, John gets shot and falls off the train. Dutch decides to leave John for dead, and upon returning to the camp, the gang is made aware of the fact that Abigail was arrested by the Pinkertons. Dutch refuses to rescue her after he is told not to by Micah. This was the last straw for Arthur, and he and Sadie decide to go rescue her anyways without Dutch's approval. While rescuing Abigail, they are confronted by Andrew Milton, a Pinkerton agent, and he decides to reveal that Micah has been betraying the gang and has been giving all their information to the Pinkertons all along. Abigail then manages to kill Milton, and then Arthur rides back to the camp and reveals to the gang that Micah has been the traitor all along. Micah denies the accusation, and then the two get into a standoff. John then returns to the camp after having been presumed dead, and he accuses Dutch of leaving him behind, and John decides to side with Arthur. Eventually, the standoff is interrupted by a bunch of Pinkertons invading the camp. Arthur and John proceed to run through the caves and traverse the mountains to escape from the Pinkertons as well as Micah and Dutch. And assuming that you had high honor and decide to be a good person by helping John get to safety, Arthur will help John escape and get back to his family. But after a while of running, Arthur has to stop as he can't go any farther due to his rapidly worsening tuberculosis. Arthur is then attacked by Micah, and the two get into one last fight. Eventually, after both of them have been severely beaten, Dutch shows up, and Arthur has one final conversation with him and Micah. Eventually, both Micah and Dutch go separate ways, and Arthur dies after succumbing to his tuberculosis. The game then fast-forwards eight years later in 1907, and the player then takes control of John Marston. The Vanderland gang has been completely disbanded, and John and his family have decided to leave their old life behind them and decide to start their own ranch. The game then slows down the pace quite a lot and gives the player some time to relax after what just happened, which I think is really nice. This whole epilogue section of the game really just feels like fan service for people who were fans of the first Red Dead Redemption game, which I didn't play until after I finished the second game, but it's still a nice section and I think it's a pretty good way to close out the story. John meets up with some of his old gang members, specifically Sadie, Charles, and Uncle. Sadie then tells John that she discovered that Micah has formed a new gang. John, Sadie, and Charles proceed to invade his gang's camp, and they discover that Dutch is also a part of Micah's new gang. John, Micah, and Dutch get into a standoff. However, Dutch proceeds to shoot Micah and walks off without saying anything. John proceeds to find the money stash that came from the Blackwater Ferry robbery. John returns to his ranch with Sadie and Charles, and they all lived happily ever after. Until 1911 when this game takes place in the timeline and they absolutely do not live happily ever after. Overall, Red Dead Redemption 2 has one of my favorite video game stories of all time, and despite some of its pacing issues at the start of the game, and a few other small complaints I have with the overall narrative, I still think it's one of the best video game stories of all time. And honestly, I didn't think the story would be all that great when I started playing the game. I thought it would end up being pretty generic and uninteresting, and that the story would play out completely as expected, but quite clearly, I was very wrong. Anyways, now I'd like to discuss the game's characters. Red Dead Redemption 2 has a very strong cast of characters. In fact, as you could probably guess at this point, it's one of my favorite cast of characters of all time. None of the characters feel like archetypes, and they feel very realistic. Every character in this game is very likable, yet they all still have major character flaws, which makes the characters much more believable and well-written. And every character has their own very well-written character arcs throughout the game, which not only adds to the overall quality of the characters, but also improves the quality of the story a significant amount. The characters are the absolute core of this game's storyline, and the narrative wouldn't be nearly as great without the wonderful cast of characters to support it. 
Even the characters that don't get a substantial character arc during the main story still get tons of character development through the various interactions, random conversations, and activities that can be had in the gang's camp. A lot of these camp interactions, conversations, and activities will really build upon the characters' backstories and personalities. Despite the fact that there are a whopping 26 gang members, all of them are still super memorable and incredible. While I do still wish that some of the characters got more development during the actual main story, the game makes up for this by including the camp interactions, which gives the characters a lot of development outside of the main story missions. And as I said earlier, the acting performances for each of the characters are truly fantastic, and really make the characters much more believable and realistic. My favorite character from this game is definitely Arthur, who is not only my favorite video game protagonist of all time, but also my favorite video game character of all time. I really do enjoy the entire cast, and it's easily one of the best cast of characters I've ever seen in any game. Overall, Red Dead Redemption 2, despite having some occasionally odd pacing issues, still has one of the greatest video game stories of all time, and it continues surpassed all of my expectations. The game also has an amazing and unforgettable cast of characters that have amazingly well-written character arcs and personalities. Anyways, on to my final conclusion about Red Dead Redemption 2 as a whole. Red Dead Redemption 2 is an incredible game, though it definitely has quite a lot of flaws, notably the repetitive mission design, the weapons not being all that different from each other, as well as there not being a reason to try other weapons, slow animations, very clunky movement and cover system, lack of incentive when it comes to exploration, pacing issues during the story, and a lot of the characters not really getting any development throughout the main story. But the game's positives heavily outweigh the negatives. The game has a simple yet very fun combat system with quite a lot of customization and fun melee weapons. The game also has a lot of excellent mechanics, such as the cores, provisions, and honor system. The game has one of the most lively, unique, and fun to explore open worlds I've ever seen in a video game. The game is one of the best looking games ever created, and has some of the best sound design and voice acting in any game to go along with the visuals. And the story and characters are unbelievably incredible and very well written. Red Dead Redemption 2 is an absolute technical marvel, and I think it very much deserves all of the praise it's been getting. Even four years later, Red Dead Redemption 2 is still the most impressive video game ever created in my opinion. It's by far one of the greatest video games ever made, and one of my personal favorites of all time. But with all that being said, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to go and drink some water. Goodbye. Also, uh, yeah, sorry for not uploading for an entire year.